Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you to LLS and AgriPart for making this forum and a chance to speak today. I believe we've got uh, 10 minutes to uh, talk about our experiences with conservation agreements at Wood Park. Um, don't we? We won't want to amend. There's the property over here. Wood Park um, is, just, is your typical Riverina Plains country, 25 kilometres north of Geraldry, out on the plains. If there's such a thing, uh, average rainfall 360 mils. Uh, and one feature of the property is seven kilometre frontage to the Yanko Creek. The property area of 7,150 hectares. And as you will see, 96% of that remains in its natural state. A very important area, 4%. In on the creek we use for grazing and fodder crops and irrigation. That plays a really important role to the overall strategy for management. It's a classic uh, wood park is typical of the properties in that area. It's a very long history of merino sheep grazing, livestock grazing across those plains for the last 150 years. And uh, wood park has been producing merino rams since 1912. There's just a couple of shots. Uh, livestock uh, is all we do. The property business depends entirely on grazing livestock. And on the right there, you'll see uh, a new project we're undertaking. It's part about our future proofing, uh, risk management. That, that's sowing, that's last year, sowing Anameka saltbush, which you think has got a big future for buffer dry times. There's a map of our conservation zones. The agreement began uh, 30th of August 2018, and it's in, it's in perpetuity, which means it's obviously the agreement's registered on title. The area of our conservation with, area with BCT is 1,646 hectares, which represents about 23% of the property. Uh, when we chose those areas, we really wanted to protect three distinct zones, uh, the riparian areas along the Yanko Creek, some uh, up on the top side there, some beautiful inland floodplain full of uh, goosefoot and lignum, saltbush, and out to the west, some um, classic uh, mile woodland areas with some sandy lunettes. So we, they were chosen very carefully because we thought they represented what the district is in its landforms. The conservation zone, zones are divided into 10 distinct zones for our management. And currently, we're looking at, as you know, as has been mentioned earlier this morning, the biodiversity conservation has a number of approaches to it. And this is something we're looking at on the north end of the property. It's a proposed area with, uh, with uh, another offset under the trans grid. Uh, that would add another 750-odd hectares into the, our conservation efforts. That's classic mile woodland. There's, there's some really good management actions proposed there. We're pretty confident that will get up and something we're looking forward to. Uh, and very happily, it abuts another very large area we're currently conserving, so it'll make a really nice area. The good thing about that potential is that BCT also managed it, as John mentioned a little earlier. We're going to show you a few shots. There's a classic one on the Yanko Creek. It's one of the major features on the property. And uh, there's... It's a classic example of the established mile establishment, some really good umbrella grass. I think that there shows what's happened over the last two or three years. It's, it's timing's been really good because we've had really good rainfall, good soil moisture, and the regen's really going very well. What you won't see, there's a lot of lovely chenopods pods uh, that are coming through too, which is a great thing. There's a scene of um, what we're doing. We're doing some um, direct seeding and, and seedlings. Uh, you'll note those red gums in behind. That, that area there was incredibly damaged, massively damaged, uh, nearly 30 years ago uh, with a bushfire, and that's one of the reasons why we're so delighted. Those young eucalypts you see there actually came from those trees. This has never happened before. The area behind was heavily flooded. And that's why we got that generation. There's a lovely shot of just classic uh, ground dwellers. Lovely little fox gloves. There's lots of good things happening. We're really pleased with how we've seen the regeneration process. 
classic example of our river in a woodland. Lots of nice species, um, and it's really going very well. Um, so, as I've said, rainfall has been good. We've really been very fortunate to see what we've seen over the last three years. And one of the things we've really noticed, uh, um, we've, where there's been stock exclusion, some of those management zones allow limited stock exclusion or zero stock. Other areas have limited grazing, very sensible arrangements, after seed set, uh, limited days, but what we're seeing great result on the ground layers, what's really been happening. And because the season's been kind the last two or three years, we're really adding to the, to, to the uh, current regeneration process by doing a lot of direct seeding, some 55 kilometres last year, and we would be putting in three to 4,000 seedlings, particularly the bull oak and clystra species, the other ones that are missing out of the sandy lunate areas. One of the problems we have in that is kangaroo problems. Uh, we ha there is a big kangaroo population we have to do a lot of uh, protection of, of seedlings. Um, and we're, I'm sort of reluctant to do exclusion fencing. Uh, it's something we may have to look at. Not happy about it, but at the moment we're doing a lot of protection of trees to get the results. And happily, the long-term rabbit program, we've really got them under, under control. The uh, conservation agreement requires uh, any reporting. It's one report a year. It's a really good process. Um, it, it's a simple, logical process. Photograph of monitoring sites, that's actually creating a good record for us and indeed for others going forward. Um, then you report on any actions we take, the usual things, the pest weed control, feral animals, etc. And if in those zones where we do, do some limited grazing, we need to complete a grazing management diary. Once again, straightforward, simple. And then, um, in the completion of that, the annual funding payments come forward. One of the great things about the, our conservation agreements, you can really add value to your business. Um, um, we, uh, if we can, because of the accreditations, it gives us access to really good wool marketing uh, through the NZM and the RQRX programs. And they add really significant benefits. We saw talking of 10 to 15 per cent. Uh, and in the same for cattle, um, I think just last week we picked up about a 14, 15 per cent advantage by an ever end of program because of the accreditation uh, status that we do have. And in the same way, there's really good markets for uh, um, um, non mules, 18 micron sheep, easy to sell. Uh, as we look to the future, uh, Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be here forever. I wish I was a river of red gum. It could be in country for at least 200 years, but that's not going to happen. So, so we're actively now seeking, but how can we make sure our efforts have a long-term future? We have some nieces and nephews, which will be helpful, but uh, part of our, our responsibility is to make sure that we can keep this program going. And, and it really is a fact that uh, you can add to uh, business uh, viability by those premiums. Uh, and, and once again, as a part of a risk management strategy, we uh, bushfires, we think one of the biggest risks of this program is conservation agreements and their, their success in the future. So we do a lot of preparation for uh, fire prevention. Uh, overall property management, containment feeding and dry times. I think we've all learned a lot about that over the last five years. That's a real winner when we do it properly and the anime salt, which is an investment we're putting in because at the end of the day, yep, we want the good conservation goals, we want the good outcomes, but we've got to maintain a good viable business. Uh, this property does depend on livestock, we've got to market into premiums, and we have to have a, there is a, a minimum number of livestock to get good selection and offering good, good sales to people. And, uh, and, uh, I think we understand, Helen and I both understand, we need to be patient and committed. It's a slow process. Um, that area's been grazed for over 150 years. We're trying to reverse that process, and we've seen some good results, as those photos may have evidenced for you. But it, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I wish it could go faster, but we're putting all the efforts in we can. And uh, it's, it's, we hope our 
our program will be in place for decades to come. That's what we're really looking forward to doing. So, uh, thank you very much for the for you. Right. <laughs> Um, thank you so much to um, Helen and to Owen for bringing your experience and your wisdom to the stage and your real life example.